Assalamualaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24/7 online. It is indeed a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Sister Naima Ghani. Did I leave out Khan? Yes, you sure did. <laughs> Am I supposed to say Naima Khan Ghani or Naima Ghani Khan? I would prefer Naima Khan Ghani. Thank wow. you. <laughs> I have always known that you were very particular about this. Name. My name, yes, I am. Wow, so it's Naima Khan Ghani. Yes. Good. So, for our viewers out there, we're going to talk to Sister Naima Khan Ghani about her services, her medical services that she coordinates as the event coordinator of um, Lifespan Holistic Health Network. This is an organi organization that serves. Uh, senior citizens and people of all different walks of life are welcome mm -hmm. so she coordinates this with uh, health programs and mind body and soul services etc so stay tuned as we talk to sister Naima on these different services that she coordinates with students with seniors and with all ages all right so welcome to the show sister Naima and I gotta write that down Naima Kangani I have all this made that mistake and i got to make that very public you could you could we start with that so who is can and who is gan <laughs> uh, why i'm very Th particular. this might be a is learning this, okay? <laughs> this might just be a learning process for our viewers because our viewers are very worldwide whether it be pakistan arabia africa we got a lot of followers in africa did you know that that's oh great, yeah that's great. uganda that's great. nigeria yeah. saudi beside the caribbean and all over so this might be interesting because a lot of countries have been ruled by the british Right, and I think that name change mm -hmm. had a lot to do with the British rule in countries that they ruled. It was part of the law that the wife changes her name to her husband's name when she gets married. Isn't that? I mean, you're in the teaching profession, not me. Yes. Uh, and that's something I also need to let the audience know. Sister Naima is a teacher by profession. How many years now? Uh, in the public school system, 17 years. Wow, that's almost my age, yeah? <laughs> but longer if I count Islamic schools, but I've been teaching but for a long time. Putting yeah. together everything, Islamic school, 30, 30 plus 30 years, yeah. years beautiful. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to this name situation. I think that's very educational because there are a lot of Muslims who don't even understand this. So I'm very particular about my name because I think it's important for me to keep my father's name because mm -hmm. I want that legacy to stay alive, at least right. with me. And of course, I will adopt my husband's name at the same time. So I wanted the best of both worlds. I don't want to give up one for the other. That is interesting. <laughs> so basically, the British system is where I, I don't know, if historically mm -hmm. speaking, if they adopted this system or they initiated this name change. But um, I like the idea that you have kept this. And I think now that you're on this show, and it's a global issue, <laughs> Our people all over the world can understand mm -hmm. this. Now that um, we're talking about this, why do you keep your father's name? Because I think I want his legacy to be kept alive, at least with me. I know my brothers will take on his name and that will move on, but I want it as, a, as his daughter. I'm the only daughter in my family, so I wanted to keep that name so that his legacy and his name will continue. And you me. also add the husband name. Yes. Now, that brings me to the next point, that a lot of people, I don't think they realize that they do not have to change their father's name. Mm -hmm. They do not have to change their father's name when they get married. They Correct. can add it. I mean, not add it, sorry. They can add their husband's surname to mm -hmm. their name, as you have. Naima Khan is your dad's name, and Ghani is your husband's name. Yes. And in some cases, I don't e people don't even need to add their husband's name. Right, they can there is no law mm -hmm. in Islam mm -hmm. that says when a woman gets married, she has to add the name. Now, that brings me to all these passport applications 
that go on in the Western world when they ask you of your surname. And do you know sometimes you apply for visas and they'll ask you for your father's name and your yeah. mother's name. Islam is so very interesting to understand the history of name change. Now that brings us to another point. So if a woman has to remarry, she's <laughs> going to have to add all these husband's names. I guess that's going to be a personal opinion, no, a choice for I, her. I have seen that happen. Yeah. I have interviewed people, and this was their name. Mm -hmm. They changed their dad's name. They add one husband name. And they kept adding. Then they add another husband name. And I'm like, what is that name? And then this was the second husband. And I'm like, okay. But they don't go further. So I guess the name tells a story of their lifeline, Probably. you know. And I wanted to follow my mom as being my role model. She kept her maiden name and her married name and hyphenated it. So I, I sort of did the same. But it's interesting because um, I think out there, because Islam is so universal, mm -hmm. once upon a time, people just lived very British style, what went on in the country, monkey yeah. see, monkey do, not realizing there is no need to change your name, number one. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can add the husband name. Two, you don't even have to. Because remember, in the Islamic world before, it just does not happen so much in the West, but in the Islamic world. And I really want our viewers yeah, to understand yeah. this. You know, husband died, the wife remarries, that husband divorced, the wife remarries. Now, are you going to be changing all these names? Not at all. <laughs> See, the, the point I'm getting yeah. at, look how beautiful Islam yeah. is. Mm -hmm. It is so realistic. It is so practical that a, hus a wife becomes the wife of the husband, but she has a choice to add the name, or not oh, to no. add the name. Mm -hmm. So it does not confuse her after because I really don't think a second husband might like calling her first wife, I mean his wife, by Poor her first name. husband's name. <laughs> does the, do you think? I don't think that I don't think so. But the point I'm getting at, don't you mm -hmm. see how beautiful Islam is? It is. Wow, it is so realistic. And uh, it's nice to know that you live up to this. That is really, you no. Know, uh, a lot of husbands going to get angry out there. Well, it liberated us so many years ago. So it gives us, Islam gives us that freedom to be able to do that. So we don't have to follow the West and say, I have to change my name. I can keep both or I can keep my father's name. Yeah, because some people change their name yeah. to their husband's name and they don't even love their husband. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that. I don't even today. know. <laughs> I don't even know if they just love the name. <laughs> but... I'm sure a lot of yeah. our youngsters there and our sisters there will now, mm -hmm. I mean, some of the intellectual ones will realize a lot of the, the, the sisters before didn't know the thought when you get married, you got to change the name and the whole system was like that with the passport and yeah. all these things. But I have noticed in the, in, the, in the East and Far East, they don't really do. They don't. Many people have no clue on their name of the husband's name. Yeah, yeah. They, they keep the because legacy. you know, yeah, in, in, in taking mm -hmm. people to Hajj and meeting people in the East and the Middle East, I have learned to realize that, and I have never spoken about it really. Today is the first day I'm really publicly speaking about that, and I think it's a good message for all people out there. Yes, change yes, the is. name if you want. However, that brings us to another point. We haven't gotten to um, the, the what do you call it, the Lifespan <laughs> Holistic <laughs> Health Network. Yet. However, <laughs> the children mm. take the name of the Father's dad. Father's name. Yeah. You see how interesting yeah. it is? The children now will have to put the name of their dad, Ibn so-and-so, and carry on mm -hmm. the legacy. But it does not necessarily mean that the wife have to. So that's good. Right. So we started with your name, right? Interesting. Let us know a little <laughs> okay. bit about your background geographically. I mean, how long now have you been in the United States of America? What's your Islamic background, career? Before, because here you are doing all these services with mm -hmm. Muslim Students Association. That's what MSA stands for? Yes. No, no MSA. MSA. Mm -hmm. Muslim Students Association. Uh, senior citizens, community work, educational. So let us know a little bit about your background. I was born in Trinidad. Uh -huh. I migrated 31 years ago. So I've lived more of my life here in the United States in South Florida rather than in Trinidad. But Trinidad is still home. Um, and I've that's the same thing as happened. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I have lived more out of Trinidad than back home. But I still love Trinidad as the land of paradise. Eh? Of course. I don't know <laughs> if people still keep it like the land of paradise, but it's how you live can make your paradise. It'll be home. No yes. matter where you go it and how long, you, it'll still be home. 
So I, when I migrated here, I was doing Islamic work in Trinidad for since I was 16. Mm. So I've been involved in Islamic activities from camping to doing um, seminars and getting even television program. The very first television program we had in Trinidad, I was the hostess of that. That was many years ago. The very first Islamic, very first Islamic television program, program very first in national, Trinidad. And yes. that used to it be in what station? It was called Focus on Islam. But we only had one station then. TTT, right? <laughs> yes. Interesting. There was only in one. Trinidad mm -hmm. and Tobago Television. I still remember that. Trinidad yes. and and I think I remember that show. Was it on a Sunday morning? It was on a Saturday morning. Oh, Saturday morning. Yeah. It's yeah. called Focus on Islam. Yeah, that's some time back. So that's a long time ago. It's back in history. So I've been involved in work since then in Trinidad. And when I migrated to the United States, I continued that same passion for, I guess, giving back to the community and being mm -hmm, involved mm -hmm. at whatever levels. Interesting. Tell us a little bit about Focus on Islam. I think that's nice. You know why? A lot of people in Trinidad really don't know about a lot of these community services mm -hmm. and things that happen over the years, which were basically the foundation of many things, many things. I remember I used to run a show on Trinidad and Tobago Television also called, I think it was Young Talent, mm -hmm. Al Hikmat Young Talent Show, something to that effect. On a Saturday morning also, so that was after Focus on Islam, I'm sure. Because oh, definitely, definitely. Focus on Islam was, we made history of yes. that many, many years ago, because I've been living here for 31 years, so it has to be 31 plus. Um, it was the very first national television Islamic show that we had mm -hmm, in Trinidad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we made history at that point where we introduced the community, we introduced the nation to Islam from short talks, lectures, even entertainment, Islamic entertainment. We'll get the students from the Sunday schools and Saturday weekend schools and they yeah. would come and they would perform. So it was an, an, uh, an avenue for us to expose the community to Islam and, and what it really meant and give them a little bit of fun and entertainment and education at the same time. Yeah, no, I do remember. So a lot of people were involved in that and some are still with us and unfortunately. So how old were you when you got involved with Focus on Islam? Um, I was Hmm, maybe 21, about 21 years old, 2021. 20, good, good. So you yeah. started your community services and community events and involvement in, in the society from a very young age, yeah? Yes, since I was... Good. So that motivated you to get into such activities here in the United States So of I America. just continued because it's been in my blood and I guess it's part of my DNA and part of my, my normal living. I can't see my life without having these activities involved mm -hmm. in it. It gets so, boring. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And you stay out of trouble that way too anyway yes. when you get involved. Anyway, so when I, when I, what caused me to move to South Florida, I came to a camp in 1988. Mm -hmm. There was a summer camp and I was w invited uh, to be one of the counselors at that camp. And that my mom came with me and decided, you know, we're thinking of migrating, so maybe South Florida will be the place where we would set down roots. So that's how we moved here. And the family that I got involved with um, today, very special people, they're still involved in the community. So I teamed up with them and got involved in Islamic work since migrating. So your Islamic activities and community mm -hmm. services was like really a springboard to your international activities today? Yes, I would say that. Yeah, because correct, here yeah. you were mm -hmm. involved and that youth activities brought you to Miami, right. Florida, and now you have just expanded Continued. on mm -hmm. those kind of activities. Yeah. Subhanallah, mashallah. Um, anything else about your background in Trinidad before we get on to here? <laughs> no, that's it. In Trinidad, I was just involved, you know, giving back to the community and I just I continued here. And I suppose I a lot of the, the, the younger generation now would not have a clue of that. No. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not unless it's up for discussion. They really don't yeah, know my background. In, because, in you know, Trinidad. sometimes when I go back to Trinidad, a lot of people have no clue yeah. of 30 years ago what used to happen and how things went on, yeah. etc. But it's interesting. Right. It is interesting. And it's also interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you meet younger people, people like... Um, of that age who were like nine, ten years when you were in these social services and then now when you meet them they are 40 years 
And they're like, wow. And they will tell you when I was just a little kid, I would remember. Do you run into people uh, like that? A few. If uh, There have been a few instances where people back home would say, or, or even if I go to visit, then they would remember, oh, your face looks familiar, you know, and then we mm -hmm, start talking. Mm -hmm. and. And like okay, but yeah, I think it's that's not something that I listen focus when I run into <laughs> some people and they look 45 years, and I'm like, all right, and they say, but chick, I knew you when I was a little boy. I said, no, now you make me feel <laughs> very old. Now. It's a lifetime ago. It's it's, but it's, it's a whole different lifetime. So tell us a little bit about um, you want to tell us about your teaching career. You want to get straight into lifespan, whichever you like. I mean, when I came, so what here, got you into teaching in America? Well, I was always teaching in the Islamic schools. Okay. When I came to the United States, my passion was uh, therapy. I wanted to become a mental health therapist. Mm -hmm, so I went mm -hmm. to school and I did follow my dream for a while. I was a mental health therapist before I became a teacher. So I did um, counseling for children and families. And after a couple of years, I decided that I needed to switch profession because mm -hmm. I needed to be there for my own family. So Here you, you I am studied helping. Counseling yes. at um, which university? At FIU. I went to Florida International University. Good, good, good. All right, then you did counseling. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what would have been that degree? Oh, I did my master's in social work. Master's in yes. social work. Good. And then you switched to? I decided that I wanted to become a teacher because my children were young at the time, elementary school level. And I wanted to have a profession that would give me the opportunity to be there for them and with them, rather than make the sacrifice to follow my personal dream and mm -hmm. be out during the nighttime where they needed to be, because the, the job that I had entailed that I work after hours, because I did therapy for children after they got out of school. And that's mm -hmm. when my own children needed me. So I made the switch, personal decision that I made mm -hmm. um, for my family. Uh, to get into teaching because my friend said, you know, that's the best profession. You're home with the kids on vacation time. When they, they go to school, you go to work, and when you're home, they're home with you. So I took that advice and I became a teacher. I just went and took the certification exam because I already had my degrees. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I became a certified math teacher, five through nine. So oh, I interesting. teach math. So I'm a certified, certified math, math yes. Teacher mm -hmm. at Makata High School. Well, yes, I went from middle school to high school, from Islamic school to middle school to high school. So I did yeah, all realm. Yes, you so I did Islamic Merima, school realm. Merima, what? Elementary school? Or no, Merima I did middle, middle school. Um, uh, it was called H. D. Perry Middle School. It's in Merima. Oh, it's uh, called. Perry Middle, Middle School. School. Why yes. did I think it was? It's in Miramar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, they closed down. They don't. They no longer exist as a middle mm -hmm. school. Mm. But I taught an Islamic school before. When I first came here, I have to give, you know, I guess a lot of support. I, I hold them very dear. Um, Masjid Al Ansar gave me my first job teaching part time while I was a student. So I went there part time, and then when I got my degree, I worked there full time. So and then middle I, school. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm high school therapy so you <laughs> can be a good consultant for a lot of youths out there well I do a lot of work with the youth yes and I'm sure people yes. in other countries who are viewing this mm -hmm. program you can get some calls so they can contact <laughs> Al Hikmar office right of course because <laughs> I must say there are a lot of people that come on the show mm -hmm. when others from different countries see the show I've had a lot of people who were called by viewers mm -hmm. to come and lecture in their country to the organizations. So I think you can be very motivational to youths and organizations that are struggling in um, areas of motivating mm -hmm. their youths and youth activities because you have done tons of activities with youths and for youths. Am I correct? Correct, yes. Excellent. And you're even doing it here with the Muslim Students Association. Of course. Excellent. Continue. And, and Al Hikmah Dawa Center is our base for all of these activities. I have to, you know, give credit because it's a place where we feel comfortable. The students feel comfortable coming in, having their meetings and their events. Even the senior citizens feel comfortable. It's a second home. So it is our base. Well, Al Hikmah Dawa well, Center well, is well, our that's base. Well, the beauty <laughs> of Al Hikmah. Al Hikmah just loves to mm -hmm. work with other people. As I said, we don't believe in reinventing the wheel. If there are people to do things out there, right. why? Just coordinate mm -hmm. work with everyone and mm -hmm. let them 
have their services and activities and that's how you're part of it and you get the blessings the key thing is to get the blessings right right and that's our philosophy we work with whatever exists already like you said don't there's no need to reinvent the wheel nah, it's you know it's time. not about the name of the fame it's about getting the work done and that's always been my philosophy get the job done no matter what you know yeah. any means necessary get the job done i think it's such a waste of yeah. time a waste of money a waste of resources yeah. you collaborate with other people and get things done and that's what mm -hmm. is called unity right and united we stand divided we fall <laughs> exactly <laughs> <The very famous laughs> thing, yeah. so that brought you to the lifespan what do you call holistic, holistic health, health network, network. Mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about um, let's see the time here. Now. Okay, good. We could we could talk a little bit before <laughs> we go on. Because okay. time just goes, eh? Time just goes. When you're having fun, yes. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about this senior citizen program, which is registered in the state of Florida. Yes, it is. As Lifespan Holistic Health mm -hmm. Network. Huh? Tell us a little bit so about this, that. This how, how long now has it been registered, right. et cetera? Okay. Well, this organization started more than 15 years ago. And um, it was an idea that my mother and father had to cater for the senior citizen community because they thought that they, this community, this section of the community was very much neglected. The focus was on the youth, focus on the young ones, yeah. and nobody was thinking about the senior citizens. Even me personally at the time thinking, oh my God, I'm too, I'm too young, I don't need to be in senior citizen, mm -hmm. you know. So I shunned the idea personally when they came up with it oh i'm not a senior citizen so i don't need to be involved in that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but look where i am so, now so, so was <laughs> it called senior citizen once initially it was called senior citizen society and then they changed the name to lifespan holistic health network because they wanted to incorporate everyone not I just think that's say smart the senior citizen people right <laughs> people <laughs> under 50 will not feel that we need to be part of this exactly and that was the philosophy and the thinking behind changing the name yeah. from senior citizen to lifespan but not realizing yes. that people yeah. who mm -hmm. are 40 and 50 will definitely reach there right. and will be part of it so they need to be part from now exactly so they will know what they're involved in exactly yeah so we wanted to incorporate everyone and yes. bridge the gap between the young and the old okay so senior citizen changed the name to lifespan holistic mm -hmm. and like i said it was an idea that it was initiated by my parents Wow. Um, so now that they are... So basically you are just a chip of that block. Yes, I'm trying to keep their legacy alive because they no longer can do this on a monthly basis because what they did was health, had health seminars and they would go from different geographical locations, different massages, different community mm -hmm, centers, mm -hmm. and they would present the whole um, health seminar where would, they would have the free medical health clinic. They would do um, provide breakfast and lunch. They would have the focus on lectures that would gear towards the, the mind, the body, and the soul. So they would have physical, where they would have a professional, a cardiologist, or somebody from a medical profession mm -hmm, mm -hmm. coming in and talking to them, as well as they would have somebody like an imam or a scholar would come and talk about the spiritual development. So they, that's why it was the holistic part. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they continued this for quite a long time until they can no longer do it at this point. So the next maybe the past two or three years, I thought, you know, it was a lull for a while. And then the community said, what's happening to the senior citizens? Because now they realize that what they took for granted when it no longer existed, how much they appreciated it. Yeah, so yeah, we, re yeah. you know, we sort of revived the whole um, organization. And now we have, we've continued the uh, health seminars and we've added the, the social aspect of it where we do brunch once a month as well for the senior citizens. So this uh, program mm -hmm. or this organization lifespan holistic health network w is it the first organization that pioneered this kind of thing in the muslim community so to my knowledge i think at least in south florida it was the first that planned programs and activities towards that particular age group mm. now we have other people coming and you know trying to because i guess they realize there's a need mm -hmm. there's a need to focus on that particular age so group so, so basically yeah. speaking this is the organization that pioneered it basically yes yes so my parents and it did makes do sense that. Mm -hmm. because now people would realize south florida is a very young community mm -hmm. In comparison to California, New York, right. where people, when they hear of America, they would go to New York and California, etc. Right, Boston. Right. But South Florida, w geographically, it's set in, it's growing. Mm -hmm. 
it was really based on a lot of people who would who, what would you call them um, people would come down here at a senior age and settle and they would relax it was more like a resort 50 years ago retirement yeah. retirement yeah, yes, state yeah. it is based mm -hmm. a retirement state but with the Muslims who came here they did not reach that stage yet Right. And it's now their children are realizing that they are the seniors because they were the pioneers. Exactly. Now Basically, they exactly. were the pioneers. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. would not have seen the need for these services. But now these services are practically mandatory. Right. Now it's becoming more and more obvious that we need to cater for this community. So Lifespan Holistic has teamed up with a lot of other organizations because mm -hmm. we can't do this you know, on our own in order for it to be sustainable. Yes. So we've teamed up with um, UHI. They also provide medical services, the pharmacists, the medical professionals, they mm -hmm, come in mm -hmm. and they do the health clinic part of it. And we've also um, sort of incorporated Nova Medical Students. So we give them the exposure and the experience that they need as medical students. Well, do they get credit? S they get community service hours and they yeah. get the, the hands-on experience uh, working with professionals. So we've teamed up with them for a number of years um, at the same time. So we've incorporated not just the seniors, but we try to bridge the gap with so many organizations that already exist, mm -hmm. and that can be beneficial with a good partnership. Mm -hmm. We also have teamed up with our Friends of Humanity International. They sponsor most of our lunches and breakfasts. Oh, interesting. interesting. And um, the Broward County Council of Muslim Students of Associations for Midland High Schools. So that is a key component of this factor now, of trying to bridge the gap between <coughs> the elderly and the, 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 the seniors, the young individuals in our community because what we notice is that when they get together the young and the not so young when they get together they find that there's such a good partnership and dynamic that, that exists between these two groups that they're yearning for more the young people think oh I'm getting a chance to give back you know mm -hmm. to my community I can listen to them they have to learn to be patient mm -hmm. with the elderly help them across if they're on a walker they mm -hmm. assist them mm -hmm. to come to their seats mm -hmm. They um, listen to them because what's happening is that when our elderly get to a certain age, they want people to listen to them. They love to talk, but there's no one listening to them. So when they come to our, our programs, we have the young people who are there listening to their stories. Right. You know, they share their biography. They love to tell their story of when they were young, uh, what uh, they and did. As you're to saying do. that, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not that I like to cut, but uh, one of the reasons right. why, like I had someone. Looking at the show is uh -huh. like, you got to let the person say everything <laughs> they want to say. But you see, sometimes yes. our viewers, I try to ask questions in between okay. our viewers mm -hmm. think. Because of the fact that um, you're saying that and viewers in their mind are probably, yes, wow. But that, that tells me and reminds me of another mm -hmm. thing. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, mm -hmm. you must sit with those who have experience. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the senior citizens are people who have lived a life of experience. So it is such a beautiful thing for the MSA and for anybody right. younger than them mm -hmm. to sit with them and listen to them. And I, I'm hearing, and I'm listening to what you said, that they are talking, but they think no one is listening to them. Right. And I think it is so important for people to listen to them. Because in Islam, we were taught by the Prophet Sallallahu to listen to the elders. Mm -hmm. Not everything may make sense. But you definitely will get a get yeah. sense of something yeah. that they're saying out of the experience, and I think that's an area we need to really concentrate right. on, and then not just tell people who are younger that, you know, be nice to them, mm -hmm. be kind to them, give them a hearing. I think we should let younger people know it's not only about being nice to them, but it's beneficial to you to listen to their stories. They may have so much in their career that yeah. you and I can learn from it. I, I mean, I learn. I learn a lot from. Uh, older people right? right seniors yeah they tell you of things in your life that you might be going through boom it gives you an idea yeah yeah i mean there's a wealth of knowledge yeah. stored up with them and and they just have that they want to share so this is a great opportunity so to do you have a time gaps. in the programs for them to talk mm -hmm. and share their stories so definitely we used to uh, at the beginning of the program we will mm -hmm. give them time you know to to speak and and Sometimes they would even want to share a story, they may want to share a joke, they may want to share an experience, they share a song, give them an opportunity to just whatever their talent is. Mm -hmm. So they may sing, 
Uh, we had entertainment the last time we had a, a last program oh, you're actually. Kidding. You're kidding. We did henna. I mean, it was the first time to see the faces lit up when they were actually getting henna done. The elderly, they were like never had it done in their life before. So there wow. was like, you know, just, just the one flower. They were like their whole hand. So it was a big thing for them and things that we take for granted. It meant so much to them to see the joy in their faces. Mm -hmm. So they had henna done. They had brunch. They socialized. They listened to old music because we played the old Indian song back in their day and took them back you know more than 30 40 50 years ago they would the kind of songs that they would listen to they went back to memory yeah, way lane. back so you had that <laughs> in the background and they were like you know bringing back these happy moments for mm -hmm. them so it was really fulfilling to see the expression and the faces in that kind of environment wow. no i i am really amazed yeah. and i think this is such an important thing and, and you were saying these things and I'm you know you know I like this sort of vision mm -hmm. and I'm thinking not only is it something of kindness to the elders but it's a great benefit to the young youngsters right the ones who are younger we can really learn so much from them exactly. so we have already been talking for more than 25 minutes wow oh yes <laughs> actually 28 minutes okay so we got to go on a short okay commercial break when we get back we want to get into some more discussion mm -hmm. on some of the activities that you have, you know, with the MSC, with the um, senior citizens, because I think before we got on the show, we were talking about that, that gala event yes. you had, some of the events you mm -hmm. have in mind for the future, some of the ideas, it may not have happened, but some of the ideas for right. the senior citizen, and I really love that idea of all age groups working together mm -hmm. and some of the services that you coordinate for them with the medical professionals to come by and, 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 and what do they offer for, the, for them, how do they benefit from it. I think s viewers in other countries, viewers in other countries will definitely learn a lot, learn a lot because they definitely got these resources. Right but not everybody probably coordinate these resources. And this is what you get going here. You coordinate seniors, mm -hmm. juniors, middle age, all ages, professionals, skilled people. Bring them all together. You yes. have people who mm -hmm. are skilled in all different walks of life and they work together as a strong community bond. So stay tuned after the short commercial break. We will continue this conversation with Sister Naima Kanganya. Thank you. on some of these services that are offered for senior citizens or maybe I want to say in the name of senior citizens for the pleasure of Allah but it brings the entire community together because we are at the end of the day one big family yes we stay are. tuned we will return after the short break inshallah Allah gives hikmat wisdom to whomsoever he wills and whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmah TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is indeed a pleasure to have with us in the studio Sister Naima Khan Ghani. And those of you who have just tuned in, we were talking about. Lifespan Holistic Health Network Services that Sister Naima Khan Ghani is the event coordinator. She's a teacher by profession and she does a lot of work and community services for the seniors, for students and for the community at large. So stay tuned as we continue this discussion. Um, with the MSC, mm -hmm. Muslim Students Association, how do they get involved with the seniors? I, I, and that's interesting. MSA, what is their age group? So we, the MSA consists of students for, from middle to high school. So mm -hmm. we're looking at 12 to maybe 18. And we don't want to confuse it for the MSA that we have in colleges because we do have an MSA, Muslim Student Association, in college. Mm -hmm. So the one that we just formed about three years ago is called the Broward County Council of Muslim Students Association for middle and high schools. I know it's a mouthful, but we focus, the MSA that I'm working with is for the middle and high school so students. So it's a Broward County MSA. Yes, so that originated 
just to give you a quick history, um, three years ago, the Broward County School District decided to recognize the American Muslim Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. So the whatever the Ramadan month Ramadan falls in, that is considered our American Muslim Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. So the students go and perform in front of school board, and that gave rise to bringing the middle and the high school students together under one umbrella, where we can motivate them to probably start MSAs at the middle and high school level, which is what we started, and we have probably over 20 schools in the central and the south regions that have MSAs or students who are involved in the council. And this is middle school and middle high Middle and high school. Which will be able to give a voice yes. for these students. Yes. And, and they have a voice. And they have a voice to the school board directly to the Because the they are part of school. the school system. Exactly. So they listen to the students, we do presentations. We are actually right now petitioning the school board in Broward County to incorporate Eid the two E's whenever it falls on uh, an instructional day that we get it as a day off mm -hmm. on our school calendar. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're waiting for that decision to be made in December, inshallah. That is interesting. That Actually, I cannot call name, but I ran into a, mm -hmm. a, one of the board members mm -hmm. for the Broad County. And I think a lot of them are in favor of it. Yes, they are. A lot of them are in favor of it. And they are, this person, her husband mm -hmm. is highly in mm -hmm. the political world. So she was telling me that um, some of them are just doing the maths to see how many Muslims right. are attending schools in Broward County, which will give them another, um, that's like doing the maths. Right. That will give them another, another point of mm -hmm. evidence to make this happen. Right, because they need to look at the statistics to find out the population of Muslim students we have in Broad County. And we are the fastest growing religion mm -hmm. here. I think mm -hmm. we're the second largest. So they know that our population is rapidly increasing in Broward County. So there's no question about that. It's just a matter of actually making it happen. So the students are very um, you know, in tune to doing that, signing petition, getting the debate team involved. Uh, they actually had a debate that they presented to the school board at the Darling Institute, hosted by Al Hikma yes, uh, Dawa yes. Center, and we, oh, yeah, you we know, had, had over the debate. Yes, people there, right? so it's been a slow but steady process to get this. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. You know, some people say we didn't get the day off yet, but it, no, we didn't get no, it yet. No, but no, we're no. working towards it. Of course, and it's a process that you have to follow through. It's not going to happen just like that. So mm -hmm. we're almost there at the end of the road, and we're hoping that in December, when they vote, that um, it'll be in our favor that this no, will become I think a reality. The message, the message is there because I mm -hmm. met one of these board members in an interfaith program and um, they were asking me uh, about it and right. whatever. And yeah. Well, when they met me first, is that, you know, I'm in favor of it. I'm like, <laughs> uh -huh, in favor of what? <laughs> they just assumed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I knew what she was talking about, but I pretended like right. I didn't know what mm -hmm. it is. But do you know that brings me to another question? And you probably think, I know a lot of people think that I sound very yeah. controversial, but I don't think I'm controversial. Do you think I'm controversial? Uh, well, we're on air, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm putting you on what the spot. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, you know, I know a lot of people think I'm controversial, mm. but I don't think I'm controversial. I like to discuss intellectual issues. And intellectual issues yes. make you think that you're controversial because you're not stereotyped. Are you following what I'm saying? I agree. And I could talk that yes. with you as yeah. a teacher. So people might think, well, yeah, what is Sheikh Shifai talking right, about? Yeah. You know, in the early days, we, we sort of pioneered things like live khutbah mm -hmm. broadcast mm -hmm. in America. In America, you know. Al Hikmat pioneered live khutbah broadcast on TV material. And I don't mean just a, a computer. I'm talking about recording the khutbahs. I had the days many, 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 many mm -hmm. years ago that people question. So being a school teacher mm -hmm. in the public school, I'm going to put you on a little spot. <laughs> but don't, don't back off from the question. That's right? if I'm ready for I this. I want Go. you to be very <laughs> honest. Okay. Because, you know, I, I like what you just said. And um, it may be another discussion like the Naima Khan Ghani thing. And I'm priming you up for it. I'm having you on, on, on some tension here. Um, when you mention the name of the students, the Broward County MSA? Council, yeah, Council of MSAs. Council mm -hmm. of MSAs, which is so powerful, which is so interesting. And really, really and realistically speaking, these students, it doesn't matter how much the seniors get together. Mm -hmm. Whether, I mean, you will have a say as a teacher, but it doesn't matter how much you take all the imams in South Florida to get in front of the board, to talk to the school board about 
a public holiday or school holiday, sorry, yeah. school yeah. holiday for the students, the maths is what will be the final analysis mm -hmm. and the Muslim students will make that difference. So when they hear the Muslim teachers Mm -hmm. and the Muslim students of public schools, mm -hmm. and I'm a Rabinitin, public schools, come forth and mm -hmm. make their case, these public schools administrators have to respond to their students' request. That's what the democratic system is all about. Correct. All right. Yes. So that brings us to the Muslim schools now. Mm -hmm. Do you really think... Huh? And I, I'm just saying because I, 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 I go around the United States of America, I meet a lot of Muslim professionals mm -hmm. and scholars, and we have had discussions. Do you really think that Muslim schools, with the amount of money that is spent, millions, and I mean millions, and if you take the Muslim schools in America, mm -hmm. we're speaking billions. But let's talk millions in, in mm -hmm. account in a school. The okay. millions that are spent to teach academic education, do you think that millions that are spent, and I want to rub it in a little more, taking Muslim hard-earned money that can be put into Islamic organizations and support this kind of lifespan holistic health network, real community services, a higher level of Islamic education, right? Mm -hmm. A higher level of social services for the community. Take that millions and put it into that. I mean billions. Put it into that and let the students benefit from the public high schools. Because you're a public high school teacher. Yes, I am. And <laughs> do you think that, that millions that are spent or billions the students really get, really get that 100% of academic, academic services, and I don't mean just book knowledge, services as they get for free in the public system. So that's a loaded question. It's very loaded. <laughs> Listen, and, and no one will disagree with you, no one will go against you. Just share the intellectual because, listen, we are thinkers. Mm -hmm. 20 years down the road, people may come back to say that was a fantastic idea. We need that. I don't know. So let me share with you. In our quest to make this happen, I have to give credit to the Islamic schools in Broward County. Okay. Because they are very supportive of actually making this happen for the public. They're not going to benefit from it, but they were very supportive because they follow their own calendar. But they were very supportive of the public school students because we work as a community where they came out in their numbers from mm -hmm. the Islamic schools, came out their numbers to the workshop that was held a few weeks ago in support where the principal came out and spoke, the imams came out and spoke from these Islamic communities and Islamic schools and spoke in favor of the community as a whole. So in that arena, we were as a community, not Islamic school versus public school. I, I think we should be calling right? them Muslim schools, right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> no, I just don't want my right. viewers to think I'm talking of religious schools. Yes, so we're but there, this is a Muslim school right. that teach academic education. Yes. Okay, beautiful. So we have, yes, of course, full-time, full-time mm -hmm. Islamic schools where they teach academics and, and religion at the same time. Uh, beautiful, yeah. So they, we worked as one entity. So it wasn't like one versus the other. So we do have, I mean, whether you're in the public school or you're in Islamic school, there are always going to be some differences. You're going to have, you know, everything is not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You may have the public school that will offer something that the Islamic school may not offer, that they would be highlighted, that you Excellent. can take advantage of. But then vice versa, you have things in the Islamic school will have to offer, like the religion and the character building and things like that in Islamic school that you can get in a public school. So th what's missing is that bridging both worlds together that we can benefit in this ideal society in an Islamic school because the deficit on both ends. Excellent. And I totally agree with you. I totally agree mm -hmm. with you. And it's a little different in America than other Muslim, other countries yeah. where Muslims, you know, have Muslim schools and you've got non-Muslims in the school you got, um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's paid by the government. The government yeah. pays 
the I, I don't know the exact percentage but there is a deep percentage that is paid and run by the Ministry of Education of the government so the Muslim schools in those countries I have no I'm not questioning that mm -hmm. so our viewers I don't want them to think I'm talking about that right. Muslim schools in other countries where the government pays the teachers mm -hmm. and you got a percentage of non-muslim students in these schools but it's the administrators are Muslims excellent that's superb I have no problem with that right. I sometimes in my little survey in America I've been all over the United States lectured and I do a lot of fundraising for a lot of Muslim schools what I've seen is the kind of millions that's my problem of money from the Muslims huh? mm -hmm. that could go into more Islamic activities as opposed to reinventing the wheel of what the government already has to offer of what the government has to offer in the scientific um, social studies world yes they get a lot of book knowledge in the Muslim schools and that is fantastic I support it exactly what you said a lot of people are scared of the shortcoming see the point mm -hmm. or the deficit that you have on this side so they prefer to send their kids into the Muslim school but I, uh, for some reason if a, 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 a bigger volume of Muslims go into the public schools here in America I think they'll have a, a stronger voice in getting a lot of things adjusted and changed that will benefit the Muslims that will benefit the Muslims and they will go to a academic school mm -hmm. 8 to 2 and go to the Islamic school in the evening from 5 to 7 on a daily basis so they will get the better of the two world I'm only because you know I see so many kind of fantastic things masjids need to have and Islamic organizations need to have and they're just always begging they're always begging and they cannot even run their Islamic home properly what I mean the masjid mm -hmm. and the Islamic organization is always a bunch of beggars huh? uh, but they're spending millions of dollars to teach a kid maths when I think you can get maths in Broward Public well, School I worked in the public school system I am in the public school system now uh, well that's why right? I'm asking you this but I also worked in the Islamic school system so right. I've, I've experienced both worlds mm -hmm. and I'm not going to say one is better than the other because I mean my children went to public school but at some t some point in time like you know you got a favor where like you say where you're going to get the best now certain things that the Islamic school offer you're not going to get it in the public school 100% so what we're in the process right now these Islamic schools is trying to develop that and they are growing and developing where they have that professionalism they have all the training for their teachers and they're getting to that point but it's a slow but steady process yeah you know we can't say we're going to give up one for the other and at the same time everybody cannot afford to go to these Islamic schools so the the parents and the families that can't afford to go to the Islamic schools they got to make the best of what they have with the public school and that's where I come in and try to provide that deficit that we're not getting and say we have these Muslims in these public schools what are we going to do about them because the numbers are growing so we're going to be not yeah, one against the it's other about, but it's about five hundred dollars a month right for fees for it a depends yeah and it depends on Four the school it depends on the school and I guess the um, the level that they are whether it's kindergarten high school it varies so I'm not sure of the range but in public school it depends on your geographical location yeah the more students you have in that area for example right here in Hollywood we have a lot of Muslim students that go to MacArthur High School which is the school that I teach at so our numbers are continuously growing so the need to have activities for the Muslims in that school is obvious and easily and readily accepted because we have the population of students there whereas you go to another school in a different area you <coughs> may have one Muslim or no Muslims going to that school so there's no need for that mm -hmm. in the schools it all depends on where you are your locality and and what your audience and what your population is yeah. no, so one is more than the other which is sense. one of the reasons for the Broward County Council of MSA is to bring these students together and not only bring the Muslim students together but it, we work as a club so our club is open to all students in the mm -hmm. school so whether you're a Muslim or non-Muslim and oddly enough we have a lot of non-Muslims joining our club because our main goal is community service right and I am brings us back to senior citizens I'm yes. hundred <laughs> percent in agreement with mm -hmm. what you have said those parents who can afford to send their students 
or their children yeah. to a private Muslim school, alhamdulillah. But the situation is, what about those who can't afford? Right. So they can mm -hmm. benefit from the public schools and with people like you who coordinate these yeah. sort of MSAs, get something very, very unique and very, very progressive yeah. going, yeah. that these students can benefit and not get corrupted by the bad things that mm -hmm. go on, mm -hmm. and also have some sort of arrangements where they can get their Islamic education properly on a daily basis At the same time, from yes. Islamic centers mm -hmm. and school. But they need to have that gap. Because what I have seen, Sister yeah. Naima, mm -hmm. I've seen one extreme. Those who only go to Muslim school, um, Muslim school they're like a little bit, some of them, not mm -hmm, all, not mm -hmm. all, some of them a little too, what would you call that? They're a little too much in a closed shop, mm -hmm. closed mind. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit in their own little world. Those who only go into public school, they don't want to associate with this Islamic right. world. So we have a, a wall in between. I'm saying we need to bridge that bridge gap. gap. Facilitate everybody. Totally agree with you. Th that's why I asked that question. Yes. I just wanted to sound no, and I totally agree with you, and that's what MSA does because we're bringing all these students, whether you're in a, an Islamic school, a public school, a charter school, a private school, we bring all the Fantastic. Muslim students together. Fantastic. So even people say, Well, we you want an MSA in an Islamic school? I said, Yes, because our focus is community service. Yeah. So we're all coming together and see how we can provide services for the community for everyone whatever Listen, the age we group definitely is. need them doing. all we need yes. the muslim school we need the muslims in public school listen we need the muslim school and we need muslims we in need public both. school and we need a combination with all of them working yeah. together so everyone benefits otherwise at the end of the day i, I have seen that happen mm -hmm. in other communities and countries and i think this is phenomenal well time has yeah. gone we really we, you know <laughs> wow i thought we were gonna. We already five minutes ahead uh, over time, but um, we had to get into some more ideas. Okay. And so, what, could you tell us in about one minute or so what are some of the ideas you have for the future on events for the MSA and the Lifespan Holistic Health Network? I want to make so sure I get the name correct. Some of the some of the things that we have already done and is continuing to be a trend for us is that we host every year a senior citizen gala where we invite all the senior citizens, citizens in our community to come out and like we call it the senior citizen prom, but it's really not really a prom. They come out, they dress up, they bring their family, they get awards and uh, certificates, Fantastic. and they're recognized for their services in the community because often they are the forgotten ones. Um, we're also working with the students in the um, MSAs to provide services for some of the seniors who can go to the grocery store. So it's a project that some of the seniors students in the high school are working on in the process of working on so they can provide some of these services for the senior citizens in the community take them if it's an hour uh, once a week take them to the groceries get their you know help them with the shopping and take them back and provide that kind of service for them I think this so is this a lot is, of things in the works this is so blessed this is so unique so phenomenal what a blessed coordination I think that is you got students mm -hmm. you got the youths you got the seniors you got all age group working together towards such a blessed cause. Well, thank you very much. We did not have enough time <laughs> to talk about all these different services. I know we went off a little bit on some other thing, but uh, as I said, I just wanted people to think, yeah. and I like uh, the mere fact that you're bringing public school students to work with the seniors and in the Islamic activities and community, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's helping to bridge the gap. And um, as I said, one of the other thing I, w I would love to start seeing the public students also get some more exposure to Islamic activities mm -hmm. and a lot of our Muslim school students get exposure to a lot of community services. Y you know what I'm yes. saying? So we don't have that extreme. Right. But may Allah bless you. Thank you very much for being on this show, Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV. We went into some detailed topics, some we very did. brainstorming <laughs> issues. but. <laughs> Allah bless you for all these community services, and I think you definitely need to come back on the show so we could probably get into some more ideas and some more <coughs> um, detailed discussions. And I must commend the idea of the, 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 the seniors gala. Uh, is that what you call yes. it? Where you recognize the seniors. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times seniors are left out. Uh, are. Seniors are left out. Actually, I just want to share something with you. Um, next year, two th well, 2020, we're planning to have a Dal Hikmat um, annual award ceremony to recognize parents of professionals. Mm. See, a lot of times people mm. recognize professionals, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they recognize you and give you an award because you're a professional. <laughs> but I think yeah. a lot of these organizations need to invite your parents and give them an award mm -hmm. for producing somebody like you. So that's what we're going to do next idea. year. We're going to recognize community leaders and professionals, recognize their parents because their parents have been forgotten. And a lot of times people only invite them to have a meal at the annual award ceremony. Mm -hmm. But we want to let them be the limelight because they're the ones who have produced these community leaders. What do you think of that idea? It's a great idea. So we need to work on that. We can work <laughs> together on that. Thank yes. you very much. So thank you very much for viewing Global Issues on Al Hikma TV 24-7 online. It has been a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat Studios, Sister Naima Kangani. Those of you who have been on, you would have enjoyed the conversation. We discussed many different areas, many different areas, students, names, seniors, health, the whole nine yards. So continue to tune in to Al Hikmat TV 24-7 online. And until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Join Al Hikmah Dawah Services for a 10 day Umrah in Ramadan 2020 from May 2nd to May 12th, 2020. Average cost is $3,000. The group will be led by Sheikh Shafai. For more details, you can contact Al Hikmah Dawah Services at 954 986 0158 or you can email us at al hikmat at al hikmat.com. Hikmat Dawah Services invites you and your family to an enjoyable evening of Islamic songs and poems on Saturday, December 7th, 2019 at 4 p.m. at the Shazan Banquet Hall adjacent to Darululum. Special guest appearances will be by world-renowned Kari Abdul Jalil. Allah is the creator of the universe. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And Malana Imtiyah from London. If you love the Prophet, then please recite with me. Food and clothing will be for sale. Contact Al Hikmat Dawah Services at 954-986-0158 for more information. Praises are due to Allah, Allah. All praises are due to Allah, Allah. Allahu 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 Allah Allahu Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as sadaqa jariya continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away or fi sabilillah in the path of Allah please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications you can call us at 954 986-0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com Allah is the creator of different faces Allah is the creator of all races Allahu 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 Allah Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi indo Pak groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Shan, National, Tilda, Himani and many many more. We're located at 36B Caroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad and Tobago. You can call us at 473 
4676 or call 476 3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com. Now open Sajida exclusive for all of your Islamic and casual wear. We carry a large selection of silk route and al karam gowns, scarves, hijabs, hijab pins, and many other accessories. We have exclusive Swarovski gold filled and sterling silver jewelry. We are located in store 143, Caroni Savannah Road, Charlieville Chiguanas, located on the opposite side of TNT Chicken Hut. For more info, you can call 328-6682 or 295-5400. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances, and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. <laughs> Truly he is the one, he has no father or son.